After the long holiday weekends, will the markets wake up this week? Let's discuss. My name is Dan Slim and welcome to another episode of Monday Market Outlook. So, okay, I know, I know I said we'll skip this week, but I had a little time, so might as well squeeze in a short episode for Monday Market Outlook. Let's look at the PSEI charts. Last week, we ended at 6,900 in the middle of nowhere as we continue to trade along the 6,800 to 7,000 range. Now, if we look at the weekly charts though, the market is still trending upwards and the consolidation here could just be a pullback in time as we slowly revert to the mean towards the 20-week EMA. But we hope that the good news last Friday can wake the markets up a bit as core PCE numbers came in at 2.8% within expectations and this is the lowest annual increase since March of 2021. So if we go back to the PSEI charts, we've managed to defend the 6,800 support here several times so far and hopefully we can continue to rally towards 7,000 this week. But let's first look at some of the index and non-index issues that may help the markets go up along the way. So we have the triple A's first, we have AP. Could this be the first signs of a reversal uh, after this drawdown? AC also trying to put the brakes on as it bounced off of 622 last week. But there's still a strong downward momentum and this rally here could happen the same way that it happened before. It rallied and then it still went down. So I would like to see AC form a more solid footing. No? Same scenario here for Ariala Land. It may still go down as we see that it usually dips below the 200-day EMA before recovering. But if you're looking for opportunities to buy AP, AC, or Ali, this could actually be a good time, but is in slowly, right? SMPH showing better signs of recovery as it managed to defend the 3220 zone here. Now next we have SEC continuing its rally towards its X date of April 8. Now remember April 8, this is a Monday. So if you are planning to sell SEC before the X date, you should sell this this Friday, right? Because if it opens on April 8, this will most likely happen. A big gap down. RCR failing to break out of this channel, very strong resistance as we see the 20 EMA and the horizontal resistance converging. So as mentioned, it's on its way up to 496 where the yield becomes 7.9% unless this consolidation area here at 503 can hold for us to form a double bottom. So, so far, the still the strongest technical stocks would be ICT. Please don't chase this anymore. Plus, also breaking out of all-time highs, there may be a pullback after its dividend X date. We have Manila Water also recovering nicely from its dividend X date and the 20-day EMA. And Monde, finally, Clearing its cup and handle level here at 1084. This could be a good buy on momentum zone. Finally, CNPF, we entered a swing trade here. And at 40, this is a very great take profit zone as it is way, way above its 3750 price target. On to some global news. Last week, the US GDP number still showing strong results as it was raised to 3.4%, reflecting strong consumer spending and a resilient economy despite high interest rates. The news coupled with core PCE numbers coming in at 2.8% within expectations could be the news that could push both the US and the local markets up this week. Now looking at the S&P 500 charts, the markets continue to push upwards after the four day consolidation here with the week ending a bit sideways but not before reaching another all time high. For this week, we will have a very, very busy economic calendar. We will have the manufacturing numbers on Monday for both local and the U.S., followed by a slew of employment data this week. Not only that, Fed chairs will be having their speeches all throughout the week, starting with Cook and then Bowman, right? So more Fed speeches on Wednesday, followed by the services PMI 
on Thursday, more Fed speeches again, followed by the initial jobless claims numbers for the U.S. More Fed speeches here. And finally, on Friday, we will have pH inflation numbers coming in where the BSP expects an uptick to 3.9%. Then we have non-farm payrolls and unemployment rate coming in for the U.S. this Friday. Interest rate decision for the BSP was moved from April 4 to April 8, presumably to hear the inflation numbers first before confirming their decision on Monday. So, so far, the S&P 500 has continued to grind slowly as we near 100 trading days since a 2% pullback. The last time we've had this pullback was way, way back in January, at the start of January. And this is one of those rare moments in history since the 1950s. So what happens when we reach 100 days without a 2% pullback? It is generally positive for the markets moving forward. Look at that possibility of a gain. It's at 100% with a mean return of around seven and a half percent so things are looking pretty great for the u.s markets for now are we in a bull market looking at the bull market checklist eight out of nine indicators says we are only gold and copper prices are also rising where they actually should be falling for three consecutive days right so this makes sense actually if we look at the secular charts as we are currently tracking along this bull market run here and it looks like we have some ways to go if we zoom in to this section here we could still end the year higher but look at this drawdown for 2025 before it recovers in 2026 or we could just slowly grind upwards until 2027 so we'll see for now let's enjoy the rally but that's it for this week please like this video if you found the information useful please subscribe to the channel for more updates and again good luck on your trades please manage your risk accordingly and i'll see you again next week